To watch with Dan is our Pixel 11 Documentary Club. One of the films we watched this month was called High on the Hog, How African-American Cuisine Transformed America. So the film takes us on a culinary journey, just for a little background, in case you didn't watch it, from Africa to the Deep South to explore the roots of America's food. The man leading the way is journalist, producer, and entrepreneur, Stephen Satterfield. I just feel like you know, the experience of seeing my own likeness. Isn't it? Reflected. Isn't it? In the hair. I see our style and the garments and how we wear stuff. And in our swagger. Our swagger, our ingenuity, our resourcefulness. Such a calming voice. Stephen's journey began by watching cooking shows like Julia Child on PBS. Later, Anthony Bourdain. His resume that follows is nothing short of impressive. He went to culinary school, became a sommelier, sommelier at 21, began a nonprofit to support winemakers in Africa, and then started a magazine called Whetstone to explore food, history, and culture. High on the Hog is his first foray into the world of documentaries, and he just knocked it out of the park with this one. So I was so honored to catch up with him earlier this week and share this conversation with you that we had. All right, so Stephen, thank you so much for being here this morning. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. So let me get right to it because we do a monthly documentary club with our viewers. And when members found out that you were the special guest coming on the show, they literally were cheering in the chat. It was 20 plus people. Your docuseries High on the Hog, it, it, I think it really had such a huge impact on their lives. And it did as mine as well. Not just because it was entertaining or well produced, but it was deeply personal and emotional. And you took us on a journey every step of the way. I was glued to the TV. So what influence has it had on your own life? Well, um, thank you, first of all, for those kind words and um, for all the enthusiastic support. Um, it has been a life-changing event, um, put mildly. I have been working for many years, um, I think, in trying to uh, get people to think more critically about the radical potential that food possesses. Um, from the perspective of our own histories and stories. And um, I was really happy to have the opportunity uh, to, to be a part of this, you know, food storytelling um, and so grateful for the way that it was received. You know, Stephen, we learned so much from watching the series. I was fascinated by every aspect, in particular, some of the local things to New York, like the oysters on Staten Island and the whole story behind it. Was there something in particular that, that you learned that may have surprised you uh, along your journey? A lot of surprises along the way. You know, um, the New York history is certainly fascinating, a, a history of black entrepreneurship uh, and enterprise and the, the world of, of oysters. Um, with Thomas Downing yeah. being the, the central figure in, in High on the Hog and this storytelling. Um, you know, for me, it was really, um, I, I think, fascinating to learn uh, the way in which Downing was received um, by the business community of, of Wall Street. Um, you know, the fact that he was able to use his restaurant, uh, his position as an oyster man, Mm -hmm. um, to really further his ideas and beliefs around, um, you know, abolition and, and black liberation. Um, so I really just found the, the connection between, you know, food and um, this higher purpose and his calling around yeah. uh, abolition to be really fascinating. Yeah, and for those who don't know, I highly, highly recommend that you read or, or watch this series if you haven't already. You know, what I love about this whole documentary club, Stephen, is I can bring some of the viewers' questions to you directly. And one of the things that our viewers all agreed upon is that this series should be what they were saying was is required watching because of the mm -hmm. educational gaps, right, when it comes to black mm -hmm. history in America and the gaps mm -hmm. that we see in our own history books. So how do you hope what you're doing with your media company can really help change that? I'm really hopeful and uh, again, really encouraged by the way in which the show, um, you know, has been received. As you mentioned, um, the docuseries is an adaptation of a book from uh, Dr. Jessica B. Harris, uh, who is our nation's foremost scholar on, um, you know, African diasporic food waste. So it was an honor uh, to work with her material um, and in fact, work alongside her um, in the very first episode. And you bring up a really excellent point, I think, uh, as our 
public school systems and institutions um, are further politicized, it really ups the ante on where in society we can access um, truthful and um, really essential parts of our history um, because the absence of Black people in the retelling of history when we know very well that Black people's presence uh, has informed so much of, of the world that we live in today, yeah. um, that that omission is uh, was is intentional. And so this type of media uh, allows us to correct the historical record with a more accurate and complete telling of all of its participants. This was obviously a huge success. Can we see more? What's ne what's next? Um, we're going to get to see more and do more. We're ecstatic that the show has been um, brought back for a second season. Yes. And uh, we are in just the very, very earliest stages of planning uh, for what that will look like. So I myself uh, do not yet know, um, but I feel um, confident that, uh, you know, New York will have a part of the story Good. Um, as it is such a big part of our uh, national story and identity. Yeah. I mean, let us know when you're in town. Uh, I, I'd love to, to, to meet you in person. And, and speaking of New York, do you have a, do you have a favorite mm. restaurant or must eat when you're here? Ooh, that's a slippery slope. <laughs> <laughs> I can get you in trouble. Yeah. I have too many friends who are uh, <laughs> restaurants <restaurateurs> here. <laughs> Um, I will just say that it is uh, it remains my favorite place on earth um, to eat go. and to enjoy restaurants. And I have particularly enjoyed um, the the necessary uh, and spontaneous adaptations to outdoor dining. Mm -hmm. um, I think have added so much um, richness and, and color to the, the dining experience Absolutely. in New York. So that's been really cool to see. Yeah, there you go. I like that. Very diplomatic in your response right there. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Satterfield, um, you can also narrate my life one day. Your voice and everything about you is the way that the mm. whole presentation of this series Thank is you. absolutely, absolutely amazing. You took me on a journey. You made me cry. You made me think, more importantly. So thank you for your time this morning. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. If there's one thing to watch this month, that's the one. Our Watch With Dan documentary picks for the month of October will be announced this time next week, picking them right now, curating. Any ideas, let me know. If you want to join the club, danapix11.com, and you're in. That's all you got to do. Send an email.